Welcome back to Otis Mule Productions. What a couple of weeks it's been. I want to thank all of you for your contributions. Your enthusiasm is wonderful. Let's start with the inspiring news first, shall we? Over 300,000 acres of southeast Montana ranch land burned this summer. Ranchers lost their pasture, their fences, and several buildings. In an effort spearheaded by Montana Game Warden Association member, Bill Dussin, sportsmen from Colstrup, Ashland, Forsyth, and Miles City joined with businessmen to donate, deliver, and replace miles of burned fences. The volunteer effort was a meaningful gesture of thanks by the sportsmen who had been blessed by the ranchers' generosity of providing hunting access throughout the past years. Friendship begets friendship. A lesson we should all pay very close attention to. We often get so caught up in the importance of our lives and professions, that we forget the impact of decisions, and the unintended consequences of those decisions, and there are those decisions which defy logic and explanation. Dare I say bison? After several years of meeting and scoping sessions, the state of Montana moved bison across the state to the Fort Peck Indian Reservation in northeast Montana. This move, after the majority of comments taken across northern Montana opposed moving the bison, after a court order prohibiting FWP from moving the bison, was conducted on a weekend day and not publicized until after the bison arrived at the Fort Peck Reservation. And who do we have to thank for this act? Governor Brian Schweitzer. Although the transfer is attributed to FWP, I know of no FWP personnel who took part in the relocation and it was the governor who took credit for the act. Let's for a moment, set aside the atrocious disregard for the people of Northeast Montana and examine the legal issues surrounding the relocation. First, the bison were moved in violation of a court order prohibiting their movement. Second, the bison are, or were, the property of the state of Montana. State law requires that when the state disposes of property, that it receive fair market value for that property. None of the news reports suggests that the bison were paid for by the tribe. So the governor illegally gave away state property. Amazingly there is no outcry from the press. But we've come to expect very little from the fourth estate, at least in Montana's major city newspapers. For real reporting, you must read the real journalism that is occurring in our rural communities such as the Phillips County News and the Glasgow Courier. It is there, that we find out that 45,000 acres of private land has been removed from the block management program by landowners upset with the transfer of bison to northeast Montana. There are uncounted thousands of acres of public land next to and behind the formerly accessible private land that is beyond the reach of the public. This is a movement begun in northeast Montana that is very likely to sympathetically roll across the state, closing down access to large portions of the state this hunting season. Yes, you should be worried. We have a governor who willfully violates the law. We have a press corps that accommodates his bullying. We have an attorney general who will not prosecute the violations. Indeed, this attorney general is rounding up uniformed law officers to speak in campaign commercials. Not legal. As of this moment, the Attorney General is filing suit against another landowner to open access in a tender foot. This is the first time in my memory that the Attorney General has bothered with an access suit. It's because Rick Hill is kicking his ass. Bullock doesn't have a statement or policy on any issues, so he has to use a compliant press corps, public employees who dare not say no, and the full weight and force of his office and state of Montana to batter a single individual into compliance. This guy has no shame. One final thought. This is for all people who vote. Think of the consequences of the behavior of people in office. I will give an example. There is, in a small rural community, a rancher who is also a justice of the peace. The man is fair and renders good decisions. He said to the warden in his office at the time, I will continue to try to be fair, but you guys are making it hard to do so. For those of you not used to the subtleties of cowboy talk, he said that it is hypocritical of fish wildlife and parks and the state of Montana to break the law, and then turn around and hold everybody else to a different standard. He's right. And the events as they have transpired demand that we spend extra time and effort mending the fences the administration has burned.